Intrauterine death, often referred to as stillbirth, is one of the most heartbreaking experiences a family can face. As nursing and midwifery students, understanding this topic is not just about medical facts. It is about learning how to provide compassionate, sensitive care during a time of immense grief. The loss of a baby before birth leaves a profound and lasting impact on parents and their families. Your role as a healthcare professional will be to offer support, guidance, and expert clinical care. Navigating this journey with families requires a deep sense of empathy and a solid foundation of knowledge, ensuring they feel supported and understood every step of the way. This essay is designed to provide you with a clear and gentle introduction to this sensitive subject. Intrauterine death, or IUD, is the medical term used when a baby dies in the womb. This diagnosis is made after 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy, depending on local guidelines. Before this time, it is referred to as a miscarriage. The loss of a baby at any stage is devastating, but the classification helps guide medical care and investigation. It is a silent tragedy that affects thousands of families each year across the United Kingdom and worldwide. Understanding the correct terminology is the first step in communicating effectively and compassionately with grieving parents, helping them to process the information they are given during an incredibly difficult and confusing time. To better understand IUD, healthcare professionals classify it into three main types based on when the loss occurs. An early IUD happens between 20 and 27 completed weeks of pregnancy. An intermediate IUD occurs between 28 and 36 completed weeks. Finally, a late IUD, also commonly known as a term stillbirth, is when the baby dies at 37 completed weeks of pregnancy or later. These distinctions are important because the potential causes and management strategies can differ depending on the gestational age. This framework helps medical teams investigate the cause of death more systematically and provide parents with clearer information about what may have happened to their baby. For parents, the news of an intrauterine death is a profound shock. They have spent months preparing for a new life, only to be faced with loss. As nurses and midwives, you will be on the front line, offering the first signs of comfort and support. Your ability to explain what is happening in simple, clear terms is crucial. It is about creating a safe space where parents can begin to grapple with their grief. This initial interaction sets the tone for their entire experience, and your gentle guidance can make an immeasurable difference in helping them navigate the difficult days that lie ahead with dignity and support. Understanding why an intrauterine death has occurred is a primary concern for both the family and the healthcare team. The causes can be grouped into four main categories. First are maternal factors, which relate to the mother's health. Conditions such as preeclampsia, poorly controlled diabetes, infections like listeriosis, or autoimmune diseases can increase the risk. Placental factors are another major cause, problems like placental abruption, where the placenta separates from the uterine wall or placental insufficiency, where it doesn't function properly, can restrict oxygen and nutrients to the baby. These issues can sometimes develop silently, making them particularly difficult to predict or prevent. Next, we consider fetal factors, which originate with the baby. These can include genetic or chromosomal abnormalities, such as Down syndrome or Edwards syndrome, which may lead to developmental problems incompatible with life. Severe structural birth defects affecting the heart, brain or other vital organs can also result in IUD. Sometimes, infections that cross the placenta, like parvovirus B19 or cytomegalovirus, can directly harm the developing fetus. The fourth category involves umbilical cord factors, accidents such as a true knot in the cord or the cord wrapping tightly around the baby's neck can cut off the blood supply, leading to a sudden and tragic loss. It is incredibly important to acknowledge that in a significant number of cases, the cause of an intrauterine death remains unexplained. Even after thorough investigations, doctors may not be able to pinpoint a specific reason. This can be particularly distressing for parents who are desperately seeking answers. As a nurse, it is vital to communicate this possibility with honesty and sensitivity. Explaining that we don't always know why can be difficult, but it is better than providing false hope or speculation. Your role is to support the family through this uncertainty, helping them understand that an unexplained loss is not their fault. The diagnosis of IUD often begins when a mother notices a change in her baby's movements. A decrease or complete absence of fetal movement is the most common sign that prompts a mother to seek medical attention. When she arrives at the hospital, the first step is usually to listen for the baby's heartbeat using a handheld Doppler device. 
heartbeat cannot be found, an ultrasound scan is the definitive diagnostic tool. The scan will show the baby's heart and confirm whether it has stopped beating. This moment of confirmation is devastating, and your calm, compassionate presence is essential as the doctor delivers the news. Once an intrauterine death is confirmed, the focus shifts to managing the situation safely and compassionately. The mother will need to give birth to the baby. This is a critical part of the process, and the healthcare team will discuss the options with her and her partner. In most cases, labor is induced, allowing the mother some time to prepare emotionally and for arrangements to be made. Waiting for labor to start naturally is also an option, though it is often not recommended due to the risk of infection and other complications. The nursing team's role during this time is to provide clear information, manage any physical symptoms, and offer constant emotional support. After the birth, a series of investigations are offered to the parents to try and determine the cause of the IUD. These tests are entirely optional, and it is the nurse's duty to ensure the parents understand what each involves so they can make an informed choice. Blood tests may be taken from the mother to check for infections or clotting disorders. The placenta will be sent for a detailed examination, as it can provide vital clues about the baby's environment in the womb. This is known as a placental histology study. These investigations are crucial for providing answers and can help guide care in future pregnancies. A post-mortem examination, or autopsy, of the baby may also be offered. This can be a very difficult decision for parents, and it must be handled with the utmost sensitivity. You should explain that an autopsy is the most comprehensive way to find a cause of death and may reveal information that no other test can. Genetic testing, often done via a small skin or placental sample, can also identify chromosomal abnormalities. It is essential to respect the parent's decision, whatever it may be, and support them without judgment. Your role is to facilitate their choices, not to direct them. Throughout this process, the nurse's responsibilities extend far beyond clinical tasks. You will be instrumental in helping the family create memories. This includes offering them the chance to see, hold, and dress their baby. Taking photographs, handprints, and footprints can provide precious mementos. Memory boxes, often prepared by hospital staff or charities, can be a source of great comfort. These acts of remembrance validate the baby's existence and honor the parent's love. Your gentle encouragement and practical help in creating these memories are an invaluable part of compassionate bereavement care, helping families begin their long journey of grief. While not all intrauterine deaths can be prevented, proactive antenatal care plays a crucial role in reducing the risk. Regular checkups with a midwife or doctor allow for the monitoring of both the mother's and the baby's health. These appointments are an opportunity to check blood pressure, test for conditions like gestational diabetes, and measure the baby's growth. Health education is a key nursing responsibility. This involves teaching expectant mothers about the importance of a healthy lifestyle, including a balanced diet, avoiding smoking and alcohol, and taking folic acid supplements. Empowering mothers with knowledge helps them become active partners in their own care. One of the most important preventative messages is encouraging mothers to be aware of their baby's movements. Programs like Count the Kicks teach women to recognize their baby's normal pattern of movement and to seek immediate medical advice if they notice a significant change. As a nurse, you must reinforce this message at every opportunity. A change in fetal movement is a potential warning sign that should never be ignored. Prompt assessment can identify problems early and may lead to interventions that save a baby's life. Your role is to ensure mothers feel confident and not anxious about reporting any concerns they may have. Following a stillbirth, providing robust psychological care and emotional support is paramount. The grief is profound and can affect every aspect of a family's life. Nurses and midwives are often the first to offer this support, creating a safe space for parents to express their feelings. It is vital to connect families with bereavement support services, such as charities like SANS, which offer counseling, support groups, and online forums. This long-term support network is essential for helping families navigate their grief, which can resurface on anniversaries or during subsequent pregnancies. Remember to include fathers and other family members, as their grief is just as valid. In conclusion, the role of the nurse in cases of intrauterine death is multifaceted and deeply significant. It spans from diagnosis and management to bereavement support and future pregnancy care. Your compassion, clear communication, and clinical expertise 
can profoundly influence a family's experience during their darkest moments. By promoting awareness, encouraging preventative health measures, and providing unwavering support, you can honor the lives of the babies who were lost and help families find a path forward. Your gentle care provides a beacon of light in a time of overwhelming sadness, making an indelible difference in the lives you touch.